So, hey, hey guys, this is Jukka from OG, aka Omnium Gathering. You are listening to Brutally Delicious Podcast. Stay metal. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. What time is it over there? It's like dinner time? No it's seven o'clock in the evening. Oh, okay. So here it is right around noon. I guess you guys about right. seven o'clock. Yeah, there's about like eight hours uh, gap between. Have yeah, you guys? Seven, eight hours. Yeah. Have you started getting the winter yet or no? I'm sorry? Has it started to get cold there yet or no? Uh, just a bit, you know, it's like basic, basic uh, October, no, November. Yeah, so just be here too, sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like a bit, it's, it's kind of like a, if you think about it in the Celsius terms, it's like a couple of, couple of um, degrees above zero, like five degrees Celsius. Okay. So, so pretty cold. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Let's talk about uh, Omnium Gatherum. First of all, I want to say I had a chance to see you guys, I think, on the last 70,000 tons, right? Back mm-hmm. in, was it 19 or it was 20, right? It was 20, yeah, just before the lockdown, yeah. Yeah, that was the last time I saw shows, but I got to see you guys. I saw you, I think, at the roll, the ice rink. Was it yeah, the yeah. Ice? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a really good show. I like yeah. it. You know, people had so much fun, and, you know, we had a blast, so what the hell? Oh, yeah. It's good because I don't get to see you guys that often, obviously, because you're mostly overseas, but so it was nice to be able to, uh, mm-hmm. to finally mm-hmm. check. So let's get up to uh, catch up to speed here. Now that Origins is complete, what was it like trying to put together a record in a climate so different from the way you had done it before with all this world nonsense going on? Well, uh, there are a couple of things, actually. Um, I think, like, if you look at it, like, positively, we had way much more time because we tour so much. Sure. So, so, so when, when there was no touring, we had, like, a really, 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 really good time to, to do pre-production, which actually started, like, after we came back from, from our... Uh, latest European t- tour in 2019, at the end of 2019, just before the lockdown, a couple of months before the lockdown. We started the pre-production 10 then, basically, with Markus. Uh, uh, he, he started to write some uh, riffs here and there, and I started to, 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 to build up the concept for the next, for the Origin album. Uh, at that time, still unnamed. Um, and, um, um, well, it was kind of like, easier but weird at the same time because we have used to be like to 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 have a really tight schedule because of all, of all the touring right and now we we have to maintain a kind of like dead deadline uh for ourselves you know just not to be carried away by the fact that we have so much time so right we did the songs kind of like we used to do but like a little bit more of a stretch in that sense like in a, in like timetable wise it was a weird experience in, 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 in a way, but, but, but nothing so drastic, drastically different than before. Was the writing content-wise different? Did you find it to be a lot more darker or more meaningful coming from the experience that we were all living through? Mm, well, I think like maybe subconsciously it, it, it might affect like, uh, like, like a bit, but consciously I think it's, it was just like uh, we were enthusiastic about uh, making new songs and new material in general. So, so that kind of positive vibe keep that like luminous and darkness away in, in that sense, because <laughs> it's it melodic death metal music, but we are, we are like, we're happy to write it. <laughs> Yeah. So, Do you fu- so there, was, there was no, there was no like big major difference, maybe like un- unconsciously, like I said. Do you find that writing this kind of music, I mean, a heavy, do you find it cathartic? Like, do you find it gets rid of your, helps you exercise your demons and get rid of all the shit that's in your head? Well, it, well, yeah, it does. You know, uh, back in the day when I was uh, a bit younger, uh, I used to, I used to think that you know it doesn't affect me at all. I, I could write any kind of music. In a sense, that is true. But 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 that this kind of like aggressive music really does have cathartic, uh, uh, like uh, yes, uh, um, like a, a like a backtone in it in in itself. Because uh, there there are studies that this kind of music can really relieve stress rather than build it up. Yeah. And not just from the performer's uh, aspect of writing, but from a listener's perspective as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I, I remember like, you know, when I went 
uh, went to see Nevermore back in like maybe they were playing in Finland well many times but the last time I saw them was like maybe back in 2006 or five like mm-hmm. a long time ago but still uh, I was super like uh, like content and happy to uh, to after that show because you know it was uh, such an uh, amazing and aggressive show at the same time and and, and I felt like a, a, a certain kind of serenity. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. And actually, and Worrell had a way of connecting with the crowd that was quite different than a lot of people, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was amazing. Rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace. I got to see him again. I saw him twice on 70,000 Tons of Metal. Just absolutely phenomenal. With his other band, too, as well. Oh, Sanctu- yeah. But, with they Sanctuary. Were kind, they were kind of like uh, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sanctuary is real. I saw them like, uh, I saw Sanctuary back in. Uh, 2015 because they were playing a same festival that we did in Canada. Right. What are you guys, uh, are you guys planning on, do you have any kind of tour dates yet or is it kind of waiting for things to open or what's the, uh, well, we have, yeah, we have finished or like confirmed finished dates for, for, for the release of origin. And, and we were supposed to go to a European tour with insomnium, like in the, in the late November, but, but, for their personal reasons, for for an uh, unfortunate situation right. that got cancelled, uh, but you know we have a we have like a lot of dates for for next spring. They are not official yet, so I cannot talk about right. them. Uh, but 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 there are there are a lot of dates. So so we are so anxious to get back uh, on the road and see see all of you guys. So so of course, what's it gonna feel like to get back on stage? And along with that. Are you are you nervous at all after such a long break? No, no, I'm not nervous at all. I'm I'm only like super excited because this is uh, one of the main reasons I've kept going uh, uh, doing this thing that I love so much is, is is because of the live shows. Right, it's going to be crazy, I imagine, because not only are you going to be excited, but the fans are going to be absolutely insane. Right, seeing yeah, yeah, it's going to be it's it's going to be great, man. I imagine the energy is going to be so off the chain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like even more than before. You know, we we know like to be a really active uh, uh, live performers. Like in our shows, there's uh, there's a lot of energy going on. We move around like uh, little primates that we are, and <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, but I think it's going to be more intense because you know we are we are so anxious to go to get back on stage and to 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 live this live this thing that we've chosen to do. Oh yeah. So let's go back to the record for a second. I've listened to it. I think it's phenomenal. And it's going to be hard for you to pick, I guess, because they're all your babies. But somewhere along the middle of this record, like I think it's Paragon, Reckoning and Fortitude. Boy, it gets really good. Those songs are in a row sequence perfectly. That's some good stuff. Yeah. Thank you you very much. Do you guys take a lot of time on the sequencing, like figuring out what goes where and how it works? Yeah, yeah, we do. In that sense, you know, we have a lot of like uh, different kinds of like lineups in that sense for the songs that uh, how how would this go uh, together with this one? And hey, nice dog, man. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. he's everywhere I go. Yeah, I have my cat over here. You can see, you can see him, but yeah, they're everywhere. But, you know, yeah. um, back to your question. Um, yeah, we do, because uh, I think like... Uh, or we all think that it's really important that that there 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 is this kind of like continuum continuum in within the album with the right. songs you know they they it it could be done like with random um, like this goes here this goes here this goes here this goes there and we don't care but you know that, that kind of like it kind of like for my opinion at least it kind of like spoils the drama like you know you have a certain kind of like a dra- dramatic. Uh, sequencing going on in, yes. in within the album, so yes, yes, we do. We we think about it a lot, and I think that's kind of interesting because in this new music culture we're in, everybody is dropping singles and not really caring about like a full length. But somewhere mm-hmm. along the line, old school people like myself and maybe you, but old school people, I like to listen to the full record. How you spent the time figuring out, you know, what song goes where. And how the moods flow and the meanings flow and that sort of stuff. I think that's lost totally now. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I, I I totally <clears throat> agree with you because you know it, it gives uh, it gives one so much more perspective into the whole 
to the whole to the whole album and to the whole uh, the the career of of the artist, like in a wider sense. Yes, and 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 I think like. Uh, <clears throat> I think like like everything revolves. I think it's coming back. Like maybe not in in a couple of years, but I think it's the the, the appreciation of the full length album is coming back back eventually. I hope so because I know people like my son's age. He's nineteen. He just wants one song and move on, mm-hmm. and he could care less. And I mm-hmm. yell at him all the time. I'm like, you don't get it. Sit down and just listen. Listen yeah. to the whole side of the record the way it was supposed to be. Yeah, but that's so you know, like those those youngsters are so that they're like so used to living this fast paced yes uh, yeah, world. But 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 with every force, there's a counter force, and it's coming. So so we don't have to worry about it. I, <laughs> I, at least I would like to believe so, and I do. I hope you're right. How do you um? How do you go when you're writing your records? I'm I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but sorry, I'm no just worries. I'm everywhere. When you're writing, how do you or do you intentionally? try not to write the same record again or is it difficult because you've got a bunch of records out do, how do you stay true to omni and gather them but different from the last record does that make sense yeah it does uh it's kind of like a paradoxical thing in a sense because you you do have to have some kind of continuum right like uh, continuity uh, between the records because we are not Frank Zappa, <laughs> right? So, so, so. Uh, at, uh, well, well. Of course, he he also had his own method and own logic, but that's totally different. But you know, it's balancing on the ledge in a sense. You know, we want to progress the music, make the music and the genre maybe in 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 in, in a wider perspective to go move forward. But but you cannot like. Um, um, it cannot be all avant-garde that we're going to make like something super different now. Right. You have to have that kind of like, um, uh, like, um, kind of like this kind of, like, can you say it like a trademark yeah. of, 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 of your style of music. And, and, and I think that's only a positive thing because that within the, this like uh, melodic death metal, maybe a bit progressive genre, there is enough, uh, different kinds of things and atmosphere, atmospheres and, and material to 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 to, uh, um, to get your feelings and to get your to 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 make your new songs. Yeah, I think so. I mean, th- like you said, there's a lot of people in the space, but yeah, there is quite a bit of space if you can carve out your little niche. Like, I think that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, because. I mean, death metal is kind of crowded. Melodic death metal is kind of crowded, but everybody's got a sort sort of little nuance that I think um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. separates them. Yeah. What are you What are you listening to these days? What's on your uh, on your regular playlist? Anything mm-hmm. new? Anything new? Oh, well, uh, like uh, well, I just started to listen to this kind of like modern dub, like this uh, band called Chinese Man, which is not it's not metal, but it's it's kind of kind of like an underground. Thing I also listen to a lot of classical music nowadays, just because of uh, to to strengthen my ear in 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 a sense. And um, for for the for the metal department, well, like I said, like I never get tired of Nevermore. Right. I never get tired of Megadeth. Uh, I like uh, I like to, the New Testament album is 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 pretty good, and I was so surprised about New Sepultura album also, yeah. which like you know I haven't listened to those guys in years, and now I just like one day I, I was drinking some beer and, and I was like you know now I'm gonna listen to their newer stuff, and I was quite like so pleasantly surprised that those yeah. guys are really really doing their thing, like you know they're not the, the they're not so the youngsters anymore, like no. even compared to me uh, um, or you, man. So so right. so. Um, so, so I was like super glad for them that they are still going strong, and of course, old classics, newer metal, maybe. Well, Beyond Cre- Creation was one of those bands that, like, you know, like I'm not like super fan of te- technical death metal, but I really like their some of their stuff. So that's maybe like in the newer department right. of metal, I've been listening like uh, within like maybe a year or two. Right. I think lately. And this has nothing to do with Omnium Gather, I'm sorry. But I think lately, even this year, maybe even more specific, the metal releases are pretty stellar. There's some great stuff out this year. Yeah. I mean, besides Origin, I mean, I've been spinning carcass torn arteries like crazy. That's oh, a yeah, great yeah. I haven't I haven't heard it yet, but I hear, I hear good things. That's a really, really good record. Fucking okay, 
And it's not that they kind of separated from that grindcore stuff and moved more towards, I dare say, you know, melodic death metal. It's not as mm-hmm. grindcore. It's really good. And those oh. guys are those guys are older too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's uh, that's awesome that you can uh, like people can understand the fact that you know uh, just because a band band's been around uh, a, a lot of time does not mean that they're kind of like stagnant. No. No, that's awesome, and that's it's, it's hope for everyone. So, yeah, uh, if fans want to find you guys, are you pretty active social wise? Well, you know, I try to be, I try to be like you know, but uh, I try to restrain myself for going to social media too much because you know, it, of course, you do. It's kind of like a drug, you know. Yes. It's just like pop, in, pop in, pop, pop out, pop in, pop out, and nothing I, like really. If you can. Look! Look at the, your your social media like status, like uh, or, or your feed, like you know. There's not so much that ha- that's happening. It's the algorithms doing their work, so it seems yeah. that something is happening. But I try to be because I usually I usually try to answer like people like like uh, are messaging me like you know fans around the world, and I try to answer them. But sometimes I just don't have the time to do it, so which uh, is qu- quite understand understandable. Oh, yeah. in a sense and of course if someone gets like uh, and this is now like i'm not like like you know i'm not pointing any fingers to 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 any directions but sometimes people can get a bit over enthusiastic in that sense so so i will like maybe do a couple of messages but if i see the uh the certain kind of like warning signs yeah then i will stop the conversation and, and that's nothing personal that's just me protecting myself it's tough because, I mean, it's a necessary evil now for myself as well with the show and everything else. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with, you know, everything shut down, it's this is the only way you can connect, sort of. Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah, exactly. so I find myself doing what you said, you know, being on way too long or trying. And then you get sidetracked. And I agree with you. It's a complete rabbit hole. But but if fans yeah, yeah. want to get a hold of you, they could find you at Omnium Gatherum. Yeah. Cool. And you said you're doing some finished shows. Can you see my dog again? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> by the way that's loki all right little rascal. <laughs> yeah this is like i can show you this is uh this is tricks oh nice hello <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just like a, uh he's like he's a youngster he's 13 years old oh wow no he's only six months old he's a great dane he's gonna be big uh, oh that's cool that's yeah. really cool <laughs> anyway <laughs> oh, yeah anyway so yeah um you got some finished shows and then you've got some stuff lined up hopefully for next spring if everything breaks mm-hmm. out Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely thank you my friend i appreciate you taking the time i really do love the record it's you been on spin welcome, since man. i got it good luck with thank everything you very much all stay, right see you on the road stay safe and hopefully we'll see you soon yep you Be too, well. man. take all care right. bye. Yeah, bye hello out there yes we're out there everyone i'm hal schwartz and i'm flynn mcclain together we host none but the brave a podcast dedicated to the music and career of bruce springsteen Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!